Hello everyone, Shroom Rover here, and today I'm excited to be bringing you my Week 7 Team Building Analysis for Division 1 Season 2 of the Pokemon Premier League. Yes, indeed. Now, we are looking to continue a stupendous start to the season. We are currently sitting at 6-0 and after overturning a pretty nasty looking matchup last week against FC Eviton. Um, so we're looking to continue that. But as ever, it's never easy. Because this week, we are going to be playing against the other Eevee-based team in the league. Another newcomer, and that is going to be Shadow Gaming Hub, my man Colton, and the Osaka Eevees. Yup. Now, uh, before we get into this, I should say that end of week 6, as with every other week, um, there was a transfer window. Which... Uh, I did not enter into, I didn't do anything in the transfer window, uh, kept my team as it is. Now our opponent Colton, he did do some things. So uh, what I'm going to do now is very quickly run over the team that Colton now has. On his roster he can choose from Mega Venusaur, Arcanine, Mesprit, Crocodile, Jellicent, Klefki, Crobat and Haxorus. A lot less, a lot fewer mons in his squad than there were. He ended up dropping three Pokemon, and it's interesting the three he dropped. He got rid of Granbull, Zeb Striker, and he got rid of one other one. Oh, who did he get rid of? He got rid of Granbull, Zeb Striker, and. Agron, that's the one, he got rid of Agron, which is interesting, because when I was looking to team build against him, three mons that I was certain he was going to bring against me were Granbull, Zeb Striker, and Agron. I was certain he was going to bring them, and he got rid of them all, which is fantastic, and he gets in Klefki. Now, Klefki provides its own whole host of issues and problems to deal with. It's a very, very annoying mon. Even without Swagger Foul Play, that combination, it's still very annoying. Um, hair in my mouth. Yeah, Klefki, very annoying uh, Pokemon to try and deal with, but, you know, for all its annoyances, he's gotten rid of a few things that I was quite worried about. He's gotten rid of one of his electric immunities. He's gotten rid of his only cleric in the form of Granbull, which is something I was really happy to see go. And Agron is just an issue, like, it's difficult to bring Agron to games because of those two very prevalent quad weaknesses it has. But if you can get away with it and bring it, it's a very powerful mon to call on. You don't mess with Stab Head Smash, like, I know that, I've got a Stab Head Smash mon user myself. So I know you don't mess with it. But he gets rid of it, he gets in Klefki, Klefki provides his own, as I say, a host of issues to deal with. <clears throat> but I'm looking at his team, and for the first time, I'm really seeing a line between the Mons I think he will bring and the Mons I really think he won't bring. Like looking at his team, I was, I'm was i certain that he's not bringing Mega Venusaur. It'll be the first time he doesn't if he doesn't, but I'm certain he won't. Like I have a Victini, I have a Scyther, I have a Fast Taunter, you know? I have an Umbreon that it just doesn't want any part of, I have a Chestnut that can take um, its dual stabs if it's running Sludge Bomb because of Bulletproof. Like Mega Venusaur... I wouldn't be bringing it against me. Colton's a good player, he knows these kind of things, so I don't see him bringing that against me either. As to the others, you know, the others he can call on any of the seven, they all do a very good job for him. Um, I would have said I wouldn't be a I would I would be surprised to see Mesprit, but he does kind of lack special offense options now, so Mesprit is something that he might be forced to bring, I'm not sure. Uh, but, you know, we'll get onto that when we get onto that. As it is, I rather think I've put together a team that can deal with all eight of his mons, so let's get right into it and see who I have brought. So, who is my team? First up, we have got Lil Dunn the Victini. Victini was rested last week, as were a lot of my big hitters, a lot of my main mons were rested for last week. Um, but Victini is back here, we've gone with a Choice Scarf set, uh, with v Crate, Bolt Strike, U-Turn and Toxic. 12 in HP, max attack, 4 in each of the defences because they were left over, and 236 
in speed. Now, what those speed EVs allow me to do is outspeed a Scarfed Jolly Haxorus. And you're going to see that is a running theme throughout my team. Haxorus worries me uh, because it can two-hit KO my entire squad with the right move set uh, and the right moves. So I want to be able to outspeed that as a matter of course. V crit for Victini, very much clickbait. Um, you know, Bolt Strike is nice to be hitting the likes of that uh, that Jellicent if he wants to bring that. The Haxorus too. Uh, U-turn, very nice for initiative. Um, Crocodile is an issue for Victini because if Victini can kill something with a V crit, Crocodile comes in to try and revenge kill. Uh, and if Victini wants to switch out, it can take it out with pursuit. I'm a bit worried about him trying to pursuit trap me with Crocodile. So I've got U-turn there to sort of have Victini in, and if I think the Crook's coming in, get on out of dodge. Now, Toxic on the Scarf set, very interesting option, I know. But there is method in my madness. Colton has one of the premier stops to Victini in the form of physically defensive Arcanine. And as a secondary thing, he could well be bringing some kind of bulky Jellicent. And given that he doesn't have Cleric support other than Healing Wish on Mesprit, Toxic on Victini is going to be nice, because a Toxic on Arcanine, that's a beautiful thing. I can wear that thing down as quickly as I can with Toxic. Same thing for Jellison. Um, and there was no other move that I really wanted to include on the moveset. So, you know what, we're just going to go with Toxic. It baits in Arcanine, it baits in Jellison, and if I can get Toxics on them, I'll be very happy indeed. Because whilst they both have reliable recovery, Toxic will rack up on them. And if I can get those to look sort of... 50-60%, I can take them out with certain ones on my team. So, that is going to be Victini. Moving on to the second member of the team, we have Lil Sis the Scyther. I'm using Scyther a lot more than I thought I would this season. When I drafted it, I said, you know, I'm certainly not going to be bringing this one every week. And I haven't, but it's become a real player for my team. It's doing very well. So what we've got here is a sort of set that I've been using a fair amount with the Aviolite setup. If I like Technician, Aerodace, Bug Bite, Knock Off and Sword Starts, we've actually got Knock Off on this time around. With 60 into HP, max attack, 196 in speed, once again with that jolly nature. So again, we are hitting the heady heights of 165 speed. That allows me to outspeed Jolly Haxorus once again. Obviously, I will not be outspeeding a Scarfer or one at plus one. However, if I like Scyther, will take a hit from... I believe Adamant uh, Haxorus at plus one. It'll certainly take one from Jolly. The only thing that can Oko this thing is a Rock Slide. Um, so if he wants to Oko Scyther, he has to bring Rock Slide. Scyther is a very, very important mon to my team. Um, there are a few things that will outspeed it, but I have sort of contingency to try and deal with them. Lower speed on the fast mons, and hopefully try and get some kind of sweep going with Scyther. Scyther can come very close, certainly after rocks. Uh, plus two Aerial Ace is an Oko on fully physically defensive Mega Venusaur if he chooses to bring it. Not that I'm expecting him to, but it's nice to have the coverage. Uh, the same for Bug Bite on physically defensive Mesprit, and nearly after an Intimidate to, to only plus one on a defensive Crocodile. Um, and it's going to be hurting the likes of Haxorus as well. Uh, Aerial Ace will do some damage to Crobat. Arcanine, that's going to be a bit of a problem. We're going to have to try and play around Arcanine because that's another sort. That's one of the main issues my team wants to deal with. Um, Knockoff will be nice for Jellison and, of course, the Mesprit if he's going to be bringing that in. Klefki, that's another issue. Klefki is something that completely walls any Scyther. Scyther can't touch Klefki. And Klefki is annoying because Klefki is that mon that does spike stacking with Prankster. Thunder waving with Prankster. Uh, foul players is a nasty op op move in its arsenal. It can run a very effective subcom mindset with Draining Kiss. Um, if I was using it, I'd be looking into the likes of, gr uh, not gravity, the opposite of that, Magnet Rise. Um, I do quite enjoy the Citrus Recycle set because it doesn't have reliable recovery. So there's all these nasty things it can do. However, I have contingency in place for this, and that comes in the form of the third mon on my team, which is going to be Bohemian the Thunderous Incarnate. We are rocking out with a Focus Sashed Thunderous with Prankster. Moves are going to be Volt Switch, Hidden Power Flying, Taunt, and Thunder Wave. 72 in HP, 8 in Defense, 248 in Special Attack, 180 in Speed. Now, Volt Switch, 
Standard. Completely standard on Thunderous, you know, they pretty much all run Volt Switch unless you're running physical, in which case you're probably running U-Turn. It's nice for the initiative. Hidden Power Flying um, is, is a very nice coverage option. It can do a lot of damage to Mega Venusaur. It's certainly a three-hit KO on a physically defensive spread. Uh, probably slightly less than the Spideff one. Um, it'll hit the Crocodile neutrally, you know, it'll hit the Haxorus neutrally. It's a bit dodgy, I don't want to be re resorting to it. This is kind of, Thunderous is kind of just come in and revenge a slower thing. Or come in, scare around a slower thing and get initiative with Volt Switch. Now, here however, is where his Klefki faces its issues. Because what does Klefki love to do? It loves to set up spikes, it loves to thunder wave things, it loves to foul play them. Firstly, I'm not rocking any attack investment, I've got zero IVs and no EVs, so pff, come at me with your foul play. Um, you may have a prankster setter, but my prankster is faster. And I have taught to shut it down, I'm immune to thunder wave, I'm immune to spikes, and I can taunt it, force it out, go for the vault switch, get initiative, uh, go for a thunder wave on whatever might want to be coming in, you know. This is my sort of go-to thing to try and deal with Klefki and at least scout out what we're working with. Um, you know, a, a subcar mindset could be problematic, but I'm rather hoping I can play around it, Volt Switch around. If he's subcar mind, it's unlikely he's going to be packing um, Magnet Rise. So, you know, we can try and work from there. So Thunderous is going to be very nice. You know, Volt Switch is putting in a nice shift against <clears throat> that bulky Jellicent. And it's hitting most things. This is one of the reasons I was very happy he got rid of Zeb Striker. Because that's just another thing that not only can come in on a Volt Switch, but it can actively benefit from it. Uh, if he was running uh, Motor Drive Zed Striker, he could run Modest, Adamant, some kind of attack boosting nature, get the plus one speed and start really hitting me hard. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, Thunderous is a little bit more free now. Um, the issue is with uh, Crocodile. I don't have Hidden Power Ice on this, which is a problem, but, you know, we're just going to have to try and work around Crocodile if he brings it. I'm confident the ones on my team can. Thunderous is here for certain other things. You know, Crocodile is not something that Thunderous is wanting to be deal with. Is wanting to be deal with? Wants to be dealing with. Let me try and get my words right. And if God forbid it has to take a Stone Edge, I've got to focus Sash. <laughs> so there's that. <clears throat> now, if I need to be Volt switching off the uh, Klefki and it's doing nasty subcar mind shenanigans, what am I going to go into? Well, I'm going to go into my fourth one on the team, which is going to be Pangolin, my Sand Slash. Now, once again, we are bringing an Assault Vest Sand Slash, which has become almost a staple of my squads. Uh, and what we've got here is a Sand Slash with Earthquake, Stone Edge, Knock Off, and Rapid Spin. We have got 248 EVs in HP, 92 in Defense, 156 in Special Defense, and 12 into Speed with that careful nature. Now, this is about as mixed defensive as I can get with Sand Slash. <clears throat> Once again, Sand Slash is not here to, to, to be a wall, it's here to maybe tank one hit having come in fresh and try and fire off Knock Off, Earthquake, Stone Age, whatever. Very important to have this around if Klefki does appear. Um, it's immune, of course, to uh, Klefki's uh, Thunder Waving. It's going to be taking damage from Spikes, but Klefki can't really do a whole lot to Sand Slash. Uh, so I can spin. Crucially, um, Colton does not have a spin blocker. He has no form of stopping Rapid Spin. Um, which is one of the reasons I brought Sand Slash over Empoleon. Uh, there was a worry that I might need Empoleon for something. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we'll get into that sort of later. Um, anyway, on to, you know, back to Sand Slash. Tempted to run Super Fang, that was the fifth move I was considering, but Assault Vest Sand Slash has been putting in a decent shift for me. Those 12 EVs in speed, by the way, are in case he wants to try and creep me with the Jellicent. Um, he could creep me up to sort of 85 speed and start going for scalds. I'd take one with an assault vest, but I don't really want to be taking it if I can avoid it. So I've put 12 in speed just to try and creep it. Um, it's taking hits decently on both sides. You know, assault vest sand slash does what it does. Earthquake and stone edge, that's just nice coverage. Um, sand slash should be able to 1v1 most forms of crowbat. Uh, I can knock off items all over the place. And yeah, just keep hazards off my side of the field as a matter of urgent course. So, fifth member of the team, now that we've gone over Sand Slash, now we're getting into the real Wally stuff. Uh, because the fifth member of the team is going to be Shardino, uh, my Mega Ordino, it's actually not mega on the screen, um, it's regular Ordino, because you got to do custom games if you're using Vcreate Victini, so, you know, when I get into the battle I'll need to change it back to regular Ordino anyway. 
So we've got Ordino here with the Ordinoite. Um, Regenerator obviously will turn into healer. Uh, we are rocking out with a fully physically defensive spread. Uh, you know, 248 HP, max defense, 4 into each of special attack and special defense because they're left over. Moves are going to be Ice Beam, Toxic, Wish, and Reflect. Uh, so, why have we not gone Stab? Well, Ice Beam kind of does the same job in this instance, and it does it a little bit better. Ice Beam will at least hit Mega Venusaur, if he brings it. Um, it'll hit Mesprit neutrally, Crook super effectively, um, Crobat and Haxor super effectively as well. Now, those four would be the only four hit super effectively by Dazzling Gleam as it is. Um, it's actually, no, that's not right. <laughs> Sorry, let me rephrase that. Um, those four that are getting hit super effectively by Ice Beam, two of them would be hit super effectively by Dazzling Gleam, two of them would resist it, of course, because they're poison types. Neither Dazzle or Ice Beam are going to hit Arcanine anyway. Uh, Jellicent's taking negligible damage from whatever. Um, and to be honest, when it's faced with Arcanine and Jellicent, I'm going to be dropping a Toxic. Uh, that's the main sort of focus of this Ordino. Ice Beam what I can, Toxic what I can't. Obviously, Klefki is a complete and utter stop to this thing, but I'm not going to be taking on Klefki with a Mega Ordino. Wish, obviously, it's there for Wish support, you know, it does what it does. Reflect is nice. Reflect helps me deal with a primarily physically offensive team a little bit better. Um, if I can get a Reflect up with Mega Ordino, I'm not taking massive damage from the likes of Haxorus's Poison Jab. Uh, from Arcanine's Flare Blitzing and Iron Heading, you know, that's not doing much. If he's going to bring Physical Mesprit, and if he brings Mesprit, I'm not expecting Physical. But if he does, I can tank those hits too. Um, this is a pretty nice answer to, to Mesprit. Um, but I do have to be aware of him going for Healing Wish. Uh, that's something I will want to look out for. <clears throat> but I'm hoping Shardino can put in a little bit of a shift here. Now, we're going to move on to the sixth member of this team, and this is where the dedicated gimmick comes into play. I was very worried about Haxorus. As I've mentioned, it can two hit KO my team with the right move spread, move set, and sorry, EV spread. So Haxorus could be an issue. I don't really have too many switch ins, so I needed a surprise check. Talking with a few people. And one gentleman in particular, you know who you are and you're a legend, came up with something very interesting. And that is a sixth member of our team, Blue Lines, the Tyrantrum. Yeah, check out this set. We have gone with a relaxed nature. The item is a Haban Berry. That is the berry that weakens dragon type attacks. We have Rockhead as the ability. 236 HP, max defense, 20 in special attack with Head Smash, Draco Meteor, Stealth Rock and Roar. Yep. This is my surprise check to Haxorus. Because if he is at plus two, no matter what nature he is, in fact, I think even if he's at plus three, no matter what nature he is, he can't take me out with a Dragon Claw. If he's life orb, that might be a bit of a problem. But if I let him set up to plus three, if I if you let someone set up to plus three in a draft format, you deserve to lose the game. Just saying. If it's an offensive setup, that is. Defensive setup, slightly less easy to deal with. But if you let someone set up to plus three offensively, then that's that's a problem. Now, if he can set up to sort of plus one or two, that could be an issue. However, if I can get a fresh switch into Tyrantrum, I can take a Dragon Claw with the Haven Berry. And then I can fire off a Draco Meteor, and if he is just a regular 252, 252 Haxorus, that will Oko. It just will. That's the power of Draco Meteor. Doesn't need massive investment, but it will Oko. That's all that Draco Meteor is really there for. Other than that, it's a standard dot JPEG defensive Tyrantrum with Stealth Rock, Raw for phasing, and Head Smash because it's just its best move. Head Smash will hit the likes of Crobat. This is also my go-to counter to Crobat. I'm not expecting Nasty Plot Bat, but if he does, you know, that might be a bit of an issue. I'm expecting, you know, regular Bat, with kind of, probably Brave Bird, U-Turn, yeah, Roost, Defog, this kind of thing. Um, and this is the problem with, with Crobat, if he runs the Nasty Plot Crobat, which could be an issue, he loses out on either Reliable Recovery, Hazard Removal, or Coverage if he wants to run one of those other things. <clears throat> So Tyrantrum should be able to take on Crobat, it's a nice offensive check to Haxorus. 
Klefki, once again, is an issue, but we're not dealing with Klefki with this guy. We've already mentioned we've got stuff to deal with Klefki. Jellison, I can cause some damage to on the switch. Mesprit doesn't appreciate a head smash. Arcanine will die, um, most likely. Mega Venusaur, if he's a defensive build, will take the, the hits fairly effectively. And I don't have too much of a crook, but once again, hopefully I should have other things to try and deal with the Crookedile. So, that is kind of the team we are working with here. Um, there are a few things that I haven't mentioned that I'm a little bit concerned about. <clears throat> now, yesterday, I think maybe it was the day before, um, I was looking down Colton's team and suddenly something kind of caught my eye that was worrying. And that is the possibility of offensive jealousy. Now, Colton is a man, much like me, who will, who will bring the gimmicks if needs be. He's pretty real when it comes to that kind of stuff. And if he was to bring, like, Scarfed Jellicent with Water Spout, he could cause massive damage to me. This is the one reason I'm bringing Scarf Victini over Lumberry. I wanted Lumberry in case of um, Thunder Wave Klefki, but I need to bring Scarfed to try and outspeed as much as possible, including this potential Jellicent. It's also the reason um, you'll have noticed that my Thunderous is not sort of going along the same way as my other offensive mons hitting that specific speed tier to outspeed Jolly Haxorus. It's actually a little bit faster. Instead of hitting 165, it's hitting 169. And that is literally just in case he brings the Rogue Scarf Jellicent, which I will outspeed at that kind of level, and I'll be able to hopefully take out with a Volt Switch if he's not invested in bulk. That's just an option that's playing on the sort of edges of my mind that he might consider. Hopefully I will have sort of measures in place to deal with it. I have two Mons that can pack knockoff, that can get rid of a Scarf and cause massive damage in the process, and if he's going to bring that offensive build, that will kind of cripple it fairly effectively. And I'll be able to work from there. But yeah, that is the team we are bringing. Those are my thoughts going into this, you know. And I'm not taking anything for granted. It, You know, the fact that we are 6-0 is fantastic. Colton is currently sitting at 1-5. and five. He hasn't had the greatest of seasons, but I'm absolutely not taking that for granted. I cannot overlook this man. He is a very, very good coach. He's a very good player, and he will surprise you, you know? The battles I've had with Colton in the past have all been spectacular for some reason or another, um, and he's always been contributing to that. So I, I, can't, I can't overlook him. I can't underestimate him in any way, shape, or form. I have a better matchup than I had last time. If anything, I would say I have the better matchup over him. Once again, not something you can take for granted in draft format. Anything can happen. But that is going to be a story for slightly later on. Now, um, this weekend I am away, so I'm not sure when this uh, team build will go up. It might go up Friday, uh, Saturday morning. Um, I'm actually leaving at, on Saturday in the morning. So this might go up Saturday morning. That will mean the battle will probably be up Sunday evening. If not, this builder will be up on Sunday evening and the battle will follow on the Monday. Um, but we'll have to see how that goes, you know. They'll be here at least by Monday. You can you can bet your life on that. But yeah, that is pretty much going to be it from me. <clears throat> now, uh, if you want to keep up to date with all things PPL, remember, as ever, links to the PPL Twitter and YouTube, they'll be down in the description below. Uh, follow along with them to sort of have all the news you need, everything about the transfers that happen every other week, what's going on uh, as far as the results are concerned, and indeed what's happening in Division 2, which is of course running parallel this season. Uh, so for all, all your news, everything you need to keep up to date will be in those two links. Now, speaking of links in the description, of course, as ever, links will be down there to Colton, Shadow Gaming Hub, uh, his Twitter and YouTube will be there too, you can see his team build videos, his battle videos from this season, all his other fantastic content. He's a lovely guy. Definitely go and check him out. You will absolutely not regret it. And very quickly, the last thing I should say, <clears throat> Colton is going through uh, a few things whereby he can't access Wi-Fi. So once again, for the third week in a row, this battle will be on Showdown. Um, it, can't, it can't happen any other way. We've got to do it on Showdown. Not a problem, of course. If that's the way it can happen, then that's the way it's got to be, and I don't mind at all. Uh, whatever, however we play it, you know, as long as it gets done, that's the main thing. And if Colton needs to play on Showdown, then we will absolutely play on Showdown, of course, you know, not a problem with that. That's just to let you know that it will be on Showdown. But, as I say, that is going to be for another video, so keep your eyes peeled for the battle which will be following this, probably in a few days time, at least by Monday. But I've rambled on for long enough, so I'm going to get out of here. Thank you for watching, once again, I do hope that you have enjoyed, and yeah. I guess with that, I'll see you all next time. Laters.